All right, Shalom. Shalom, I'm giving our praises, our glory, our honors unto Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah, by Hashem Yahweh Kodash, the blindness to the apostles and the elders of great millstone. Peace and blessings to the whole for elect. We have an um, update to these protests that have been going on around the country on different college campuses. And um, things are, uh, are seeming to escalate. A number of different arrests have arised, and it's all due to this situation that's going on in the Middle East between uh, Israel and Gaza. All right. So this article that I have here is from the USA Today. And it reads, uh, mass arrests, officers in riot gear. Pro-Palestinian protesters face police crackdowns. And there was a few protests earlier in the month in uh, Colombia, but now it's spreading. Okay. Uh, so it says here, uh, out of Chicago, it says Summer, Papa Chin, and 200 other activist students at Northwestern University had just set up more than two dozen tents and tarps on the picturesque university lawn. The mood in the morning was calm. Students brought Palestinian flags and drums to play for passing cars, honking support. Then the cops showed up to shut them down. It says, we thought it's, we thought it's Northwestern University. They have a liberal reputation to uphold, but they came within minutes. Papa Chin said of Thursday's confrontation. So this is last Thursday. Campus police began removing tents, but left after about 100 protesters linked arms and formed the barricade. Papa Chin and thousands of other student protesters around the nation have seen an unexpected side of their colleges. What they consider a militarized response to basic civil rights and free speech. And that's what's been happening. It's been happening uh, all over the country. It's been happening in Atlanta. It's been happening uh, in Texas. It's been happening in uh, in New York. All right? And, you know, you basically have these students, you know, these college students setting up tents, protesters screaming at the top of their lungs, you know, showing flags and things of what they say it's pretty much um, uh, in an effort to, to, as if it's going to change anything, as if them holding signs are going to change the fact that the government is supporting, you know, what's going on overseas with this conflict. But what's going on is, is you have these universities, you know, deploying these police forces, locking students up, beating them back. And it's becoming a um, a trending thing all across the the U.S. So it says from California to New York, from Texas to Illinois, hundreds of students have been arrested at the college presidents called police, some in riot gear and some carrying tear gas to remove their own students from in- encampments on campus quads. Some question whether authorities are overreacting. Other question the priorities of academic leaders who sick the police on them. All right. Uh, Polarizing question of free speech versus safety. The student-made tent cities that have been at the heart of the Israel-Hamas protests, conflicts have sprouted up at several universities, most notably Columbia. For college presidents, the encampments are often seen as an intimidating presence and interruption of life on campus. And uh, it's going to it's going to continue to grow for a while. But this is, you know, it's just another testament to the growing, um, the growing, uh, the growing disappointment that. You know, these Americans and, and now young Americans and, and college students, you know, that they have against, you know, the U.S. and their policies and what they spend their money on. And everyone's pretty much fed up. You know, you got everyone speaking against in their own way. 
speaking against the tyranny of Esau. This all goes back to E. It all goes back to the devil. It all goes back to, to, uh, uh, really, this, you know, this order out of chaos. Because, you know, all these protests all set up. Uh, but to the elites, you know, the, uh, the end justifies the means, and that's this uh, NWO agenda that they have. Okay, bringing in the MOTB, the implantable device, uh, and putting these uh, these people in total slavery under control. Right, but it's all it's all a testament to really prophecy. Okay. Um, Listen, this here. It says that you at UCLA, Students for Justice in Palestine set up an encampment Thursday on Roy's Quad. Quote, we are not leaving until our demands are met, the group said in an Instagram post. Also in Los Angeles, the University of Southern California declared its campus closed and asked the L.A. Police Department to clear a demonstration after it arrested 94 people linked to a protest Wednesday. Now, you got some universities around the country that are protesting and some in the same cities, you know, that are not protesting, you know, which begs the question how much of these universities are chosen to stay protest and how much do these students really care about what's going on? It just all depends, uh, especially on like a, a more diverse campus, okay? Okay. Um, But needless to say, it's all prophecy. It's just another statement that these uh, Americans are fed up, okay? And these these young Americans are, are fed up. When you go into history, right, and when you look at uh, the hippie movement, so-called hippie movement and other movements in the 60s and 70s, they all started on, on college campuses, Okay? It started on college campuses amongst the young people, and then it blew up to a whole movement, right? Like the uh, the protests against the Vietnam War. All of these protests started on campuses. So you're going to find the same narrative in America throughout history, all right? But no matter how it happens or how it pops up, what is really being said? How, how does this play out in the real world, okay? And what's actually going on, okay? Let's go to the Apocrypha. All right? I'm just going to get one scripture. No need to get more. All right? And this is the main scripture that is manifesting. The book of Second Ezra. Second Ezra is in the, in the Apocrypha, chapter 15. In 16, it says, for, there's, for there shall be sedition among men and invading one another, and they should not regard their kings nor princes. All right? Standing up against your government, and what you see in here with these protests uh, is, a, is a beginning stages of sedition. First, you have protests. You know, you have your picket signs. You know, your your campouts, and then eventually, you get the police involved. Violence ensues, and it becomes an all you know all out brawl and major riot. And then things spread from city to city. You know. But who are they coming against? Who are these people really coming against? They're coming against their rulers. Okay. They're, they're, you know, you got the campus presidents, but that goes into, you know, the councils over the city. Then over the city, you got the state, and over the state, you got the federal government. All right? But this is just a small, a small um, look into eventually what's going to overtake the world. 
because you have more major conflicts and more major protests erupting all over the planet. But here in the U.S., you know, the major news is now you have these college campuses uh, being uh, um, camped out upon by these students and they're protesting, but they're sending the police forces in there, not not administrators, not the campus presidents and the, the student RAs and those that are in power, professors, you know, telling the students to calm down. No, they send the police in. Okay? So it says, They shall not regard their kings nor princes, and the course of their actions shall, shall stand in their power. A man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able. And then as it gets really out of hand, then you have curfews being uh, instated. Curfews where you can only be out until a certain time at night, and then you can go back out on, on the streets at a certain time in the morning. Uh, you know, this happened during the the, uh, the uh, pandemic in 2020, right? You had the National Guard sent in. All these things are, are pretty much uh, um, spelling out the end of this society, okay? And then eventually, eventually this trouble comes. And the trouble is going to come, you know, we say Jacob's trouble, but it's it's coming because of different events and different factors are going to collapse this society. You know, the famine, the scarcity of food and water because of hyperinflation, the wars increasing the prices because of, you know, supplies need to be shipped overseas. Different work needs to be put in place with different budgets, um, uh, growing unrest and, and, and dissension and and anxiety and morale amongst the people is low amongst the people is low there's going to be different factors that is going to spell out the demise of this place and this prophecy so it says a man shall have no pity upon his neighbor that's coming soon but shall destroy their houses with the sword and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation all that's coming because of these cities because of the people's pride, because of the evil and wickedness, they're going to be troubled. It's going to start with these protests and these riots and these these different uh, um, uh, people coming together. You know, different groups. You know, lobbyists and this. You know, it's a whole election year, twenty twenty four, election year. You know, things that are going on, uh, things that are going on locally, nationally. So we'll see what happens. But this is 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 um, a telltale sign of the end. So I just want to bring that news out. All praise to go to Yahweh, Bashmi, Al Shai, Bashun, Kaku, Dash, Shalom.